everybody. My name is Renee Perry, and I work with Four Lane as a senior consultant. And today's webinar, we're going to talk about using custom fields. We're going to talk about what they can be used for, and where they will be, where they're going to show up in in our processes when we do use them. So, interesting topic, um, and hopefully you will get some value out of it as well. So to begin, uh, custom fields in QuickBooks Desktop can be utilized in various ways to tailor the software to better suit your specific business needs. And that goes back to what we were talking about. You know, maybe you haven't outgrown QuickBooks. Maybe we just need to show you some interesting ways that you can get the data out and in uh, that you need to run your business effectively. So some common uses for custom fields include tracking additional information so you can use custom fields to add extra details to your customer vendor item or employee records and sometimes this includes things like account numbers special preferences or any other data that might be relevant to you that you would like to track um, we can also use it for categorizing transactions so you can create custom fields to categorize your transactions in a way that will make sense for your business. Uh, an example would be that you might want to track projects. We already know how to track projects, but sometimes it doesn't have everything we want to track on there. So we can add to that. Um, departments, again, normally we'd use classes, but maybe we want to see our reports in a little bit different way. So departments or regions for expenses or sales. And then we can, and this is the most important, I think, we can use custom fields for filtering and sorting data. So custom fields allow you to filter and sort your data more effectively, which can be useful when you're running reports or searching for specific information within your QuickBooks database. And we're gonna pop over to QuickBooks here in just a minute and, and look at some of these scenarios. Uh, another thing they can be used for is personalizing your forms and documents. So custom fields can be added to your invoices, your estimates, purchase orders, to include in additional information that is important for your business or your customers. And I would add to that that it also allows us to um, collect information in those same spaces. And last, but probably not all to be honest uh, is integration with other software so if you're using quickbooks desktop in conjunction with other software systems we can you'll you might have fields in those other systems that don't exist in quickbooks but we still want to bring that data over um, so we can create custom fields for those for that data to post into in quickbooks and allow you to pull uh, more reporting in quickbooks on that on that information How do I make custom fields work for my business? So if custom, and this is just some information that people who've used this for a long time will know this, but if, if you're new to custom fields in QuickBooks, probably this has never been explained to you. But if we put custom fields on our name list items, those fields can be used in the headers, the header sections of our transactions and allow summary level reporting and again, we'll, I'll show you this in a minute when we get into QuickBooks. If they're tied to the items, they can be used in item records and the field can be added in the line items section of the transactions. So the reporting can be drilled down to the line item level. <clears throat> and that's a very important distinction to make. Where's my data gonna show up? And it depends on where you go in to add that custom field. And I'll show you what that means. Okay, so we're gonna start with custom fields on names, and we're gonna start by going into a customer record. So let me get to that for you. And so here we are in QuickBooks. And I'm gonna come over here to the customer center. And I could just as easily go to the vendor center. I'm gonna get the same exact screen, okay? And I'm gonna double click on 
any customer in my list. Doesn't matter. And we get the familiar customer card here. And over here on the left, I'm going to go to additional info, and you'll see this custom field section on the right. This is where we add our name level custom fields, and we go do that by going into define fields. So from here, I can start to create my custom fields, okay? And I'll show you how that works in just a second. Uh, let me stop this for a moment. Get my notes up in front of me. Okay, so I've made this one here. It's called, I called it territory because maybe I want to track the territories um, for my of my customers and the sales that I'm going to make. So I've added a label called territory. And now this has asked me, where do I want to use this information? Well, I want this information on my customer card. So I've checked the customer column. If I were going to use it on the vendor, I could also check the vendor. Um, that is an option, but I'm just doing it on customer right now. And then this one is very important. What kind of data am I trying to either collect or convey? And you can see there's lots of options. So it could be a free type. It could be numbers with or without decimals. It could be a date, uh, a phone number, or the one I've used for this one, a multi-choice list. And then I've gone in and I've put my multiple choices in there. So Texas North, South, East, West. What I've unchecked is allow the users to enter their own text. And this is important and I'll tell you why if we're trying to pull specific data. If I allow people to just willy nilly go put things in there, when I go to filter my reporting, I'm not gonna know what to filter on. I'm gonna wanna, and for this particular scenario, I'm gonna wanna filter on one of these four things and not have to guess what all someone put in. So that can be a very important button to make sure it's unchecked. Okay, and then this next section here, tells QuickBooks, I want this to be required on every transaction or every new piece of list data that I put in, every new customer uh, that I put in, which you can absolutely do. I'm not going to do it on this one because not all of my customers require this data. Okay. And then you just save it. So, what does that look like? Well, now on this particular record, Flowertopia, this customer, I've assigned the territory of Texas North. And so when I create um, an invoice, let's say, it's gonna automatically fill in this territory for me because I've put it on the record. If I hadn't already put it on the record, then I could put it in on the fly uh, just for the invoice. So that's the first thing we've done, and we'll, we'll see how that works here in just a minute. And let me get over here. Okay, so the next thing I would do is go add that information to my invoices. Okay, and I did that by um, changing my template, of course. Let's come down here to Sophia. There it is, my invoice there. And because that's on the customer level, I made that custom field on the customer or name level is really what I should say because you could have added that on employee record or from a vendor record, but where it's gonna show up in your reports is in the header section or on your forms, it's gonna be in the header section. So that's this area up here, this being the line item section down here. So I've just come in and I've turned it on. I can see it on the screen, great, so I can fill it in. I've also turned it on on the client side just for giggles and of course you don't have to. None of this information has to be client facing. And so we see it, uh, we would see it right here. Okay, 
So if I go in to make an invoice for this customer, you'll see that the territory fills in automatically as soon as I tell it which customer it is. It's going to fill in their territory right there for me. And I can also pull a report. If I wanted to do, let's say, a sales by, I don't know, uh, sales by customer detail, and I wanted to filter it down to just that territory. And then here is where I told you it's very important not to have things all over the place because you got to remember how to type it in. Okay. And so now here are my sales by customers in the Texas North Territory for this given period of time, okay? So that's one use for our custom field. The next use might be on items, and I find the items one fascinating. Those are my favorite. Um, and the way we get there is to go to our item list. It's a very similar process. Double click on any item in your items list, doesn't matter and then come over to the custom fields button and then you would hit define fields. Now, I've set up several here uh, ahead of time. So this one is, I wanna know, I wanna be able to add up the weight of my items that I'm selling so that I can combine them and know how much the total package or shipment is going to be. So that's one use. So I've assigned a specific weight. This is, you know, 5.15 pounds to each of my items in my item list. Uh, I might want to be, I might want to pull a report for commissions. So I've made a commissions drop down. Um, is it commissionable? Yes or no. I can go pull a sales by sales rep report at the end of the month and filter down to just commissionable items and see what my commission's going to be that for that month for my people. I've also put one in for uh, color variants. I want to point out that when we do variants, QuickBooks does not keep inventory by variant. So in other words, if I wanted to know my quantity on hand by color, I have to put in a separate SKU for each of the color variants. But this is just a way to track if I just want to say I have vases and I want to make sure my person doing the pick and pack is pulling the right color. That's all. It's still all on the same item, single item SKU. Okay, and we'll, oh, sorry, it's making me do this, define fields, and okay, and get out of there, please. There we go. All right, so okay on that. Now, same situation with my templates, right? I've got to, if I'm going to collect information or show information, I've got to get it into the database, and how I do that is with uh, the templates. So. Again, on the templates, if I've put a custom field on a, an item record or, or through the item records is where I set it up, that information is going to be available in my columns section of my template. And your custom fields are always down here at the bottom. So this is where I can turn them on and off and have the customer see them or not see them. It's totally up to you. Uh, so that's there. Okay. So what does that look like? Oops. Um, let's go back to this one. So there's that same invoice and now on my line items, there's my ceramic vase, 10 inch ceramic vase. And I have my weight. So let me take this away. Does this? Uh, I kind of forgot it does this until yesterday, which was cool. Um, the weight per piece is 5.15 pounds, and they bought five of those. Awesome. Is this piece commissionable or not commissionable? I would actually apply this to the item record itself, so it would automatically fill in. Uh, we wouldn't be allowing people to just choose willy-nilly, but let's say yes. And then um, the color. The ceramic vase, they wanted a blue ones. Okay, so again, I can pull reporting on this or my pick list. 
Um, and then the glass face, these weigh 3.2 pounds each. Um, commissionable, yes. And these, they want those to be clear. Okay. So let's save that. And, oh, yeah, well, that's nice. Um, I've broken it. Sorry about that. I know what's causing the problem. I just need to find time to fix it. There we go. Uh, let's get out of here. I'm going to get out of that and that and that. Okay. And we'll go ahead and close that. There we go. All right, back at the ranch. So then what I've done, so several, several reasons to use this, right? Um, let's go ahead and do our colors. I guess it's going to do that. Commissionable, yes. Color uh, blue, color clear. Um, with this weights thing, what we were able to do, so remember this was like 5.15 pounds and this was 3.2 pounds. And then we create a subtotal of the weights times the quantities, uh, weights being a custom field. And now we're able to have QuickBooks calculate that if they're buying five times 5.15, 25.75 pounds there, 32 pounds here. So I've got a total weight for this package, 57.75 pounds, which is going to help me uh, when I go to pack it up and ship it, right? The other thing that's helpful, let's go ahead and get out of that. Let's go over here. So a sales order, same thing. I went into my templates and up, updated them. Um, and I've chosen the colors on here. Great. Why? Because now I want to send it. Um, I need to send a packing slip back to my, or sorry, a pick list back to my warehouse. Yeah, let's preview. <clears throat> so now I'm able to let my people in the back know. And remember, I only have this one SKU right, that I'm tracking, but I'm telling my warehouse, hey, I need you to pull one purple and two clear, pack it for this client, get it out the door, okay? So that can be really helpful if you don't, don't really have a need for a zillion SKUs for different variants. I'll get out of that. All right, let's close that. And then the last thing I will show you, it's funny how quickly the time goes by. Um, I'm going to do a sales by, uh, let's do a sales by rep detail. There we go. And so I'm going to customize the report and I'm going to use my custom field to filter. So I'm going to put the commissionable on here. And the only answer I'm interested in is yes because the shipping was non-commissionable, and so I, I'm not paying commission on it. I don't need it on this report. So I'll say okay. And then <clears throat> there's my, I didn't put a sales rep in, so no sales rep right now, but if I had sales rep, this would be broken down by sales rep. And there are my invoices that they sold with commissionable items on there. So now my commission's super easy to calculate for the month. It's all broken out for me, aside from just doing the percentage uh, the commission percentage is easy enough to do in Excel. So that is that in a nutshell. And there is so much more. I mean, I probably could have gone on for this for like two hours. And okay. So in summary, um, there's many creative things you could do with these custom fields. Um, sky's kind of the limit. Best to just get in there and play with it because it's certainly not going to hurt anything. And if there's information you want to track, QuickBooks does not have a place for it. This is when we try creating custom fields to solve that problem. And as always, if you or your clients need any help, we're always here to assist and happy to do so. 
And if you have any questions, please reach out to us here at Fordlane. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.